Hey, it's Donna here. I'm so happy to have you crafting with me today. I have a bunch of old sweaters that I want to turn into some cozy fall decor. I'm excited to share them with you. Let's get crafting. So for this one, I'm going to start off with an old sweater sleeve. I'm just going to cut it down to size a bit here and I'm going to set all my scraps aside for some future projects. I also have this other piece here. I wanted to use the buttons and I'm also going to use some of the other scraps, which I will show you in a minute. But first I needed to just cut those buttons off and then set those aside. And then I'm going to be going back to the sleeve. I wanted to cut that cuffed off and also cut off some of the excess. I don't need it to be this big. I'm going to be using that cuff for another project. I turned the sleeve inside out and now I'm going to just again like I said trim this down. I don't want this to be too bulky at the bottom. I also trimmed it off on the bottom to give it more of a rounded look. At this point here, I just kind of cut the corners off, but later on you'll see me trimming it down even more. I'm taking my Sharpie and I'm going to create kind of just a half circle here. So what I am going to be doing is creating a sweater owl. I had seen it all over Pinterest and some other websites and I loved the look of it. I thought it would be a really easy and fun call craft to make for the fall season. I'm just pulling the sweater sleeve just to create a bit more of an even look. I'm going to use hot glue just to seal all my seams together. So I'm just going to start off at the top. I'm being very gentle with how you apply it. I didn't want to make it too gloopy, gloppy, however you want to say it. I didn't want to go too heavy handed with the glue. So here you can see now I am rounding off the bottom some more. I had tested it out with some stuffing and it wasn't sitting properly and it looked kind of lopsided. So I'm like, okay, the only way I can fix that is to trim off the excess. So I went ahead and did that and created a round, rounded bottom and it worked a lot better. I'm going to start closing the bottom off as well, but you want to make sure you leave a portion of it open so then you can turn it the right way around and also it gives you a spot to stuff it. So I'm just going to go ahead again using my hot glue. You could stitch this if you want. I'm not a good sewer, so I'm just using hot glue. So once you're happy with that, you're going to turn it inside out no sorry turn it the right way around so it's facing the correct way and I'm focusing on the pointy tips to make sure that they are nice and pointy and then you can stuff it so I'm using stuffing that I had on hand it was a big huge bag that I had uh, for another project but you could definitely use some pillows it's a really inexpensive way to use stuffing or I've even heard people uh, use some old pillows that would work as well once you've got it stuffed the way you like, you can see it's not going to sit right. So I'm going to use some rocks and I'm going to put them in a little baggie here. This is something that I did when I made gnomes. It, what it does is makes it so much easier to sit on a shelf because it's weighted on the bottom. But I didn't want my rocks to uh, fall all over the place in the owl uh, since I'm closing it up on the bottom and I didn't want my rocks to fall out. So that's why I decided to use a bag and I made the mistake here. I decided to add some fluff, which I'll show you in a moment here. What I did is just turn my seams inward at the edges of the opening inward and created a seam. And then I added just a bit of hot glue, pinched that together and that closed it up. So here I'm adding some more stuffing and I should not have done that because then it didn't end up sitting quite right. I struggled a little bit, but I didn't have um, everything attached to in place. So I was able to move things around once it was all sealed up and then it was sitting better. I'm glad I did put the rocks in there because it definitely helped. So now I'm going to work on the face. So I'm going to use this brown scrap of some sweater and I really like the different little flecks here. I am going to be using this to create the beak. I'm just creating just a basic triangle shape and then you can just cut it the way you need it to fit the size of your owl. I don't have any specific dimensions for this owl. I just kind of wung it, <laughs> which is what I normally do. I'm using this off-white sweater piece and that's what I'm gonna use for my eyes as well as the button. If you have a look at owls, you'll see that there is a definition around the eye where the feathers are a different color. So that's what this uh, light cream colored piece is. 
and then the eye, of course, in the center for the actual eyeball. So now I'm gonna just place everything. I've got two of the cream circle pieces and then the beak, and I wanted to, wings as well. So I wanted to use this texture piece here that I'm cutting out, and then I'm just gonna cut it into kind of an oblong oval shape. And I also took advantage of the fact that there's some texture on there. So I cut around that as well, just to create some interest to the wings. So of course I cut two wings as well and then I'm going to be using some hot glue as well to attach them. You could add some stitching before you close up your owl if you want on the belly portion. I didn't bother to do that. I'm trying to keep this project as simple as possible. So once you've got everything laid out and figured out where you want it to go, you can just start to glue everything into place. I'm just going to trim the beak a little bit because uh, it wasn't fitting around the eyes so I just trimmed that up a little and once I've got all that into place I am then going to go ahead and attach the eyes as well. An another little touch you could add is some stitching through the buttonholes as well as you choose to. So I put the wings in place and I kind of wish I attached them just a little bit lower. I thought it looked a little bit out of proportion but hey that's okay. I still think this little guy turned out really well. It was such an easy project. I love how it turned out. This is gonna be a quick and easy one. You're gonna be using the cuffs from the sleeves of sweaters. I'm trimming off any of the excess. I don't need this little piece here. So I'm gonna just get rid of that. But if you wanna keep that on, that's totally fine. I need these pieces to be approximately an inch and a half in, in uh, width. I'm using some fabric glue. And at this point, I should have added a little bit of water to the glue that would help it to soak into the fibers. I'm using this to prevent this from fraying and using fabric glue, it dries clear and it's washable and it is also flexible once dry. I'm also cutting these down so that they are the right length. I want them to be all approximately the same. So I'm just trimming those excess off. And then I am going to create a little tube. So you could use some paper towel tubing or whatever. Uh, I just decided that uh, I'm gonna just keep it as is. I wanted it to be a little bit more natural, I guess, so that they actually look a bit like a sweater here, uh, not so structured. So yes, I am actually creating some napkin rings. I again had seen this a lot on Pinterest and other places and I wanted to create some because it was such an easy project and a great way to use up these little scraps. So I created the loop, glued it together with some hot glue and then again, just using some fabric glue to seal off any of the edges I'm gonna set them aside, allow it all to dry, and added embellishment. I am adding a laser cut maple leaf to all of these. It was such an easy project, and I think they turned out so well. I can't wait to use them for the fall season. So Pinterest was definitely inspiring me on this day um, when I chose to create all these fall sweater crafts. I had this pot in my stash and this wood bowl that I had thrifted and they fit together perfectly. The pot was the perfect shape to create an acorn. You could just paint the pot, but I decided I wanted to cover the pot with a sweater sleeve. So I'm just gonna use this brown one again. I love the flex in it. And I'm just measuring how much I need to make sure that I get proper coverage and I will fold over the lip at the top lip and underneath. I'm gonna slip that over now. And then I'm not folding it completely under uh, on the pot here. And I'll show you why in a bit, but 
here I folded the sleeve into the pot and it's kind of tight so I decided to go ahead and just create some slits and then that would allow me to fit this top of the sleeve better on the inside. I'm just using some hot glue here and then I'm going to press those flaps into place on the inside. You can also see I did wash the inside of my pot as well. So once you've got that all in place, you can flip it over and then I'm just going to add some glue to the bottom here. I'm being quite generous just around the edge and I'm just working in sections as well. So you can go ahead and add some extra glue where needed for the stability extra stability I'm using a wood slice on the bottom and that will help it to sit better on the surface I found that it really made a difference so again just use some hot glue for that so I'm going to set that aside and now work on the top of our acorn so I just needed to remove the tag here somebody suggested trying using a hot dryer here to remove any of the labels but I think my label was just too old and dried out so that technique didn't work for me unfortunately but I was able to scrape most of it off I'm just going to use just some craft paint and I'm just going to smear and dab and create kind of a grungy look for the acorn lid so you can see there's still a shine you could sand this down if you want but I don't know I thought I would try just putting the craft paint straight onto that shiny surface to see how it would look and I was actually pleasantly surprised another thing you could do too is strip the coating and then stain the wood that was definitely an option but I was trying to make this as easy for me as possible and sometimes just going in with some straight up paint creating some texture and um, interest to the piece and just seeing where you go with that. So I know sometimes craft paint doesn't always stick well to a shiny surface like this, but I've got a trick for you. Once this was fully dry, I took it outside and gave it a coat of some clear matte spray and that helps to seal in the paint so it doesn't chip off. You can see how cool that looks. I love the grungy look of the lid. It looks like an old weather acorn that's been sitting out under the tree for a long time. I wanted this lid to be removable, so I thought it would be fun to use it as a little bit of storage. I wanted to add a stem to the top. I'm just using a piece of wood that I got from the dollar store. They have some great pieces all cut down. You can even get these at Dollar Tree. They are great for crafting. I'm using a combo of some E6000 and some hot glue to attach my stem. So then I've got a little handle to use to open this up and store some fun little goodies inside. If you don't have a pot like this, then you could use a clay pot. That would work as well. But I love how this turned out. I think it's such a fun piece. So this next one is my own creation. I had this wire leaf that I picked up a couple of years ago from Dollar Tree and I also have this large scrap of sweater here. I'm going to go over the entire leaf with my fabric glue. Now, I should have used a stronger glue, maybe E6000 or I'm not sure if the Gorilla Glue fabric glue would have worked for this better, but this particular fabric glue, which I got from my local dollar store, was not enough. I lined it all, pressed my uh, sweater into place, allowed it to dry overnight, and it lifted in a few spots. And as I worked on it, it came apart. But I have a fix for it, and I actually prefer the way it looks anyways with my fix. I tried to go in and add a bit more glue here and there to help and fix my mistake, but it still wasn't enough and I will show you as I go. So I am going to cut around the leaf and this is where I discovered that <laughs> the glue was not holding to the wire form and I should have known better, <laughs> but you know, I was it was wishful thinking I went for it anyways and yeah it was coming off so I am going to continue to trim around this but I'm only going to trim around it in sections so what I decided to fix it with was some stitching so I'm using some tapestry needles and some 
I'm not sure what type of embroidery thread this is. It's like a yarn. I took this piece apart and it was pretty close to the color of the leaf frame. So I thought this would be a good choice. I just tied a knot and I threaded my needle and then I'm going from the bottom up and, and then I'm wrapping around the needle or sorry the wire frame coming up through the bottom again and I'm just going to create a basic stitch going around attaching the sweater to the frame this worked really well it did take me a while but the effect actually turned out really really well I love the way it looked you could attempt to use a sewing machine if you have a nice sturdy one that would go over the frame but the hand stitch look actually looks really cool you can see how it's looking so far so again like I said I'm working in sections here because I didn't want this to completely come apart on me so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm trying to also preserve as much of the sweater scraps as possible because then it makes it easier to use them for some future projects. So I'm just going to continue work on this piece until I get, go all the way around. And if you need to extend your thread, I would just knot it off like I'm doing here. But again, that wasn't quite working for me. I should have gone in and just use some hot glue at the back, which I do end up using or doing, which I will show you. Uh, but my knot, I just couldn't get it tight enough without stretching the, the sweater. So I just made do though. I got to the end and I did run out here and there. So I had to just restart in spots. Here, I'm just doing a basic X stitch over the wire, just again, to help secure the middle portion of the frame to the sweater as well. So rather than ending with this knot, I'm just using some hot glue. I'm adding hot glue to the little knot that I had when I started. And then to finish it off, I just used the hot glue. I didn't bother knotting it at all. But you can see how cool that looks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just add some fabric glue along with some water and a paintbrush. And I'm going to seal all the edge. That will help secure my stitches and also help prevent the sweater from fraying. I'm gonna go in and trim off any of the excess threads just to clean it up at the back. You can cover that back with fabric, but I chose not to. I'm using this for myself, so that part didn't bother me. I've got this branch that I had foraged. It's something you know I love to do, and I wanted to use this branch as a hanger. So I'm tying some jute twine to my branch, cutting a length off that is to the right length for me to hang this. So you can see I'm kind of hanging this kind of off to the side a little bit. I thought it created some interest to this. And then I'm going to use some hot glue. Once I've got the placement figured out, I'm just gonna flip this around here and flip my stick around as well. And then I'm going to just use some hot glue to attach. I am also using some, just a little dab of hot glue on the knots to prevent those from coming apart. I'm using some jute twine to create a hanger as well. I'm just tying a one on, sorry, one end to the one end of the branch, and then I'm gonna tie it on to the other side. And you wanna make sure that you have got your twine on the right side of the little stick that's poking up. If you have one of those, at this point, I didn't have it on the right side, but I corrected it by now. To adjust it so it hangs properly, I haven't glued on my hanger yet to the branch so then what you do is just twist it into place and that helps to secure it in place so then it hangs right on your wall it's such a unique piece I think it turned out so well and I absolutely love the stitching I have more fun craft fall crafts for you to check out in this video right here let me know what you think and we'll see you in the next one thank you so much for joining me bye